welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Krishnan Dure, teaching in the Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta, Calcutta. Today, we are concerned with the paper Economic History of India from earliest times to 1707. The module that we are concerned today here is introduction and the Indian geography in connection with early India up to 1280. The main objectives of this module that I want to make you understand is relating history to geography with particular emphasis on the economic dimensions of the activities of the early Indians up to 1300 CE. In this connection, we must concentrate on these things, roots in early India, material prosperity, agriculture, industry, trade and commerce. Now introduction, in introduction part, we are concerned with archaeological artifacts and historical events from early India to be taken into account. Human beings appear to have characterized geographical spaces with their ideas and activities accordingly. It has been through ages. Geographical spaces transformed into historical places, some of sense of direction developed, Grama, Janapada, Nagara, etc. developed, overland routes, roads for connectivity, geographically built, river and communication utilized. Now, four aims of human life according to Indian tradition. These are dharma, righteousness, artha, material prosperity, kama, desires, moksha, salvation. Of these, artha or material prosperity is essential for the existence of human beings at the physical level in life. One may acquire material prosperity by pursuing agriculture, that is, krishi, cattle keeping, poshupalanam, and trade, vanijya. The Orthoshastra of Kautilya makes us aware of this. Now, students, we have to understand this, that economic activities of the early Indians, in order to understand them, we have to understand these economic activities through ages, but with some breaks, so that we can understand clearly their economic organizations, activities, etc., etc. So, we have divided certain time brackets. We have introduced certain time brackets. First of all, economic activities up to circa 1750 BCE. In this time, up to this time bracket, up to this time, what we get? We get the Horopans are known to have been involved in the production of both agriculture and non-agricultural goods. Agricultural goods intu intu in induced rice, in included rice crops like wheat, barley, etc. Non-agricultural articles included bricks, terracotta objects, etc. They also seem to have known the art of plying wheeled cars for overland communication and watercrafts for communication across water. Now, after this, what we get? We get economic activities up to 1000 BCE. So, we have introduced 1500 to 1000 BCE. What we get during this time period? We get during the period from about 1500 to about 1000 BCE, we find the people to have pursued agricultural activities. Probably they also used underground water for the purpose of agricultural production. They also resorted to artisanal production as indicated by references to Takshaka, Briksha Chedaka, Charmamna, Karmara, etc. The Rigveda is our major source of information in this regard. Now, after after 1000 BCE up to 600 BCE, what we get regarding their economic activities? We get during this later 
1000 BC to 600 BCE. So, we have used later Vedic period. During this period, agricultural crops like brihi, that is paddy, godhumo, wheat, shaktabo, flower made of barley, etc., were known. Craftsmen like Kormaro, Monikaro, Ishukaro, that is arrow maker, the Rojju Sarjo, the rope maker, Hironokaro, that is goldsmith, etc., were also known. Archaeological traces of iron tools and painted graver that is graver which had painted designs on those objects painted graver goods like bowls dishes etc from different parts of india such as jodhpur hastinapur atranji khera mathura lent support to artisanal production now economic activities from 600 to 300 bce up to this up to 600 BCE, what we get? In essence, in a nutshell, we can say that early Indians economically organized geographical spaces in order to produce both agricultural as well as non-agricultural products in order to survive themselves at the physical level in life. So, so far as agricultural goods were concerned, they produced different types of crops, wheat, barley, etc. They also produced non-agricultural goods like uh, industrials, industrial goods and they also maintained overland communication in order to move their merchandise from one place to another. And they also produced artisanals, they also resorted to artisanal activities like takshana or briksha chedaka in order to provide space for further economic activities. They had to remove briksha or trees also in order to facilitate their Active, economic activities further. So, that is why we get certain changes and up to this we have also seen that they also produced some areas, they also transformed some geographical spaces into those areas of economic activities which they called nagaras or cities in case of the Harappans as we see even today also. So, this is how they gradually change their pattern of economic activities and develop their life also. Thus, we get from 600 BCE to 300 BCE what we get and their Students, in this connection, you must remember one thing that human beings always try to preserve their experiences for later generations. And in that connection, we get their experiences from different literary texts. This is how we get Rig Vedic sources, later Vedic sources, as well as Buddhist textual sources which we find from 600 BCE. Let us see what we get from those literary textual sources, information regarding their economic activities. Let us see from this slide. Economic activities from circa 600 to 300 BCE. Texts like the Binaya Pitaka, Digho Nikayo, that is Dirgho Nikayo, Anguttaro Nikayo, Majjhimo Nikayo, Shatta Nipato, etc. Ashtadhai of Panini. Remember, Panini wrote a grammar on Sanskrit. It is completely a grammatical text on Sanskrit language. It has 
no concern directly with economic activities, information like economic activities. But what we get from this book in connection with the explanation of this Sanskrit grammar, Panini used those things as examples or use for this book grammatical text which were used in day to day lives. So, this is how we can analyze those grammatical information and get the required information regarding the economic activities and that is why this text has been taken into consideration for understanding economic activities of early Indians of this period. Remember this text is so important that this is also important for understanding later days economic activities also. So, we have taken it in this period. So, Ashtadhyay of Panini and the artifacts from archaeological excavations at several sites of the Middle Gangetic region provide information about the work of cultivation during the period from 600 to 300 BCE. As we move what we get as we have already told you that human beings economic activities are concerned mainly with agriculture and non-agricultural parts. So, here also we get information regarding agriculture. What we get? We get agriculture, paddy, brihi, tila, sesame, etc. were produced. Agricultural implements because agricultural operations can be done with the use of certain agricultural implements as we also require today. So, also in our ancestors days also they used agricultural implements. What we get information? What information do we get from those texts? We get agricultural implements like hollow that is plow, kuddalo that is spade etc. were used. Production of crafts and occupations Buddhist texts and archaeological artifacts support the existence of occupational groups like Peshokaro, Tontubayo, Rajoko, Maha, Nahapito that is Barbar, Nahapito etc. Professional organizations like Sreni, Gono, Pugo and Shangho existed in the society of the time. Rich merchant called Sethi or Sreshti, the merchant leader called Sarthabaho all these information we get from these textual sources regarding all these speak volume for their economic activities. Now, as we move from this period to towards further, what we get? We get actually information regarding their progressive, their progress and development further and further. What we get? Let us see in the next slide. 300 to 200 BCE. Agriculture. Agrarian economy was emphasized upon. The Greek accounts of Megasthenes, Aryan, Strabo were aware of the fertility of the land due to the river. Remember students one thing, these foreign accounts, non-indigenous accounts also either they came to India or they received information required, they are required information from other informants and they also recorded in their texts and we are using those information in order to understand our ancestors economic activities during this day period. So, we have used foreign accounts also. What we get? They are also aware of the rains due to the monsoon. Officials called agronomy supervise the task of irrigation in the rural area we learn from the Orthoshastra of Kautillo that the land of the king was known as Shita and the task of cultivation was supervised by the superintendent of agri agriculture called Shita Dhaksha. Both non-indigenous accounts make us aware of the fact that cereals like Sali, Rice, Kodrava, Mugga, Masa, Tana that is Oat. Masuro, lentil, etc., were gone. 
students in this connection i would like to make you understand one important thing the as we are using the text of orthoshastra of kautilya we are using this text remember one thing texts were not an overnight phenomenon it was written through ages it means the people who wrote maybe one maybe more than one who wrote these texts they ultimately preserved their experiences regarding their interactions with the surroundings what they interacted with their surroundings they preserved their experiences preserved in those texts as they had understood remember as they had understood they have preserved and we are using in the light of our experiences those texts and including information from those texts in order to understand their patterns of economic activities patterns of changes in economic activities so at the time of using such literary texts we should also remember that those were produced by the authors as they had understood at their times during the period 200 bce to 300 ce remember students as our early indians had moved from age to age they had developed their economic activities it means they had developed their experiences they had developed their further their they have they, they had ensured their further progress towards development of economic activities so what we get again agriculture agricultural crops produced included paddy with its varieties remember we learned that paddy was produced during the vedic period age of the vedas now we are getting information the varieties of paddy it means the people had developed their experiences in the production of paddy so they had preserve their experiences in their texts and we are getting information and this is how we are getting information regarding the changes of their in their economic activities through ages so we get varieties such as brihi shali wheat godhumo barley sugarcane cotton coconut etc crops innumerable epigraphic records from mathura sharnath varut junar bhaja amravati dhannakatak etc provide references to different professions these were such as the carpenter the bamboo maker the weaver the oil maker the perfumer the garland maker the goldsmith students in this connection you must remember one thing as the people had developed their experiences as they had developed their economic activities as they had they had caused their progress further and further they also needed different crafts in order to sustain their economic activities their other they they also needed supports from other uh, supports in the form of other activities because bamboo maker or oil maker perfumer all these are also needed they were they also had needed these products in order to in connection with their economic activities as today also well students so far we have discussed many things remember one thing these are entirely from what we get from different textual epigraphic or field archaeological materials so on the basis of those information we have been trying to build our ideas we have been translating our ideas about the economic activities of the early indians from earliest times to 1300 ce remember what they have preserved on the basis of those information we have been trying but 
in this connection we must be very careful while we are using their sources, their textual materials that they had preserved. Unless and until we become aware of this, we may be led to a wrong conclusion. This is number one. Number two, in writing any piece in connection with economic activities of the early Indians, we have to remember as I have told you three major points. Number one, production. Number two, consumption. Number three, transportation or distribution. And production, so far as production is concerned, we need two major things. One major thing, land, whatever, say agricultural production or non-agricultural production. We have to have a piece of land, useful land, so that we can produce our goods that we require. Number two. So far as transportation is concerned, we have to make roads, we have to use water routes, maybe canals, maybe rivers, maybe seas or oceans, we have to use for the transportation of what we have produced. And so far as consumption is concerned, not only we, but also our neighboring countries maybe overseas countries. So, these three major points we have to keep in mind while writing anything particularly economic in regard to economic activities. So, that we can squarely understand what our ancestors particularly early Indians had done in this regard. Thank you.